Imagine that you own a supermarket. Most of the goods sold, you get them from local suppliers, except for the fruits. You searched online for suppliers in other countries and found the one that seems legit. You contacted him, agreed upon the terms of your work together. Every 14 days, he sends you 200 kilograms of fruits and gets paid $1,500, including shipping fees. What happens if after a while, he begins to delay your shipments? Or worse, he doesn't send them at all when you make a big purchase from him. Well, you'll be very angry at him and at the same time can't find a way to refund your money. He stopped contacting you or replying to you at all. You also don't know how to sue him in his country for your money. Even if you could, the money paid to lawyers will exceed the money you will get from him by a lot. So to solve this problem in the future, you can hire an escrow services company where you pay them your money and the supplier will get it only after he sends you the fruits at the agreed upon time. Or you can use a smart contract between you and the supplier, eliminating the need for the escrow and its fees. In this video, you will know exactly what are smart contracts and how they really work. Characteristics of smart contracts, some applications of smart contracts, and finally, risks of using smart contracts. We have included timestamps so you can skip to any part you want. With that said, let's get started. Smart contracts are basically just like traditional contracts, an agreement between two or more parties to exchange money, properties, services, or anything that has value. Traditional contracts are papers, where contract terms are written and signed. Smart contracts, on the other hand, are lines of code or a program stored on a blockchain, where terms of the agreement are written into this code. These smart contracts are self-executing, which means that these contracts execute the terms of the agreement automatically when certain conditions are met, without the need for human intervention. Smart contracts are written in the form of if, then functions. If something happens, something else will automatically happen. To understand what that means, let's imagine a snacks vending machine. This machine sells the can of Coke for about half a dollar. If you put in a dollar and select Coke, then the machine automatically gives you a can of Coke and your change, 50 cents. This vending machine is the most basic form of smart contracts. If you give it half a dollar, then you'll get a can of Coke only. For example, we can write a smart contract code right now that says, if you give me $4,000, then you will get one Ethereum. This swap will be done automatically without my or your intervention. Ethereum smart contracts code is written using a language called Solidity. This code is stored and running on the Ethereum decentralized blockchain. What that means is that the smart contracts code is stored on a lot of computers at the same time, which makes it transparent to all parties and impossible for any computer to modify the code without the network noticing and denying the edit. You should know that you can write smart contracts on different blockchains other than Ethereum, like Bitcoin and Cardano, but with different languages other than Solidity. A very important feature of smart contracts is that they are immutable, which means that once a smart contract is written and deployed on the blockchain, you can't edit it again. Even if it has errors or bugs, what you can do is write a new one and stop using the old contract. This is actually a good thing to prevent the modification of code by scammers after you engage with them in a smart contract. You should also know that smart contracts can store, receive, and send cryptocurrencies, just like any crypto wallet. But this money isn't controlled by any user. It is controlled by the programmed code in the smart contract. So for example, you find a new supplier for your supermarket and both of you agree on the terms of the trade. He will supply to you 200 kilograms of fruits every two weeks, and he will get paid $1,500 for the fruits. If he delays your shipment for more than two days, a 5% fee will be paid. So you send the $1,500 to the smart contract, and when the supplier delivers your shipment and uploads the digital delivery receipt to smart contract, 
he gets his money released automatically. If he delays the shipment for more than two days, he will get paid $1,425 only when he uploads the delivery receipt. All of this happens without the need for papers, courtrooms, escrow services, lawyers, and other intermediaries. While also being faster than any other type of traditional contracts and more cost-effective through eliminating third-party fees. The previous example is a very simple use for a smart contract. In fact, they can get very complicated, and today they are used to build a wide variety of decentralized applications, also called dApps, which we will talk about in a minute. But now, let's talk about how the smart contracts work on the backend. When a smart contract's code is written and deployed on the blockchain, it will be stored on all computers on the blockchain network, allowing anyone to view the code and verify its terms. Each computer on the blockchain network has a copy of all smart contracts and their current states, and also a copy of the balances of all participant parties. So, in our example, if your balance at the beginning was $10,000, let's say equal to 2.5 ETH, and the balance of the supplier was 0.5 ETH. Then when you lock up the money in the smart contract, your balance decreases by 0.375 ETH. This new balance is communicated with all computers on the network after the suppliers delivers the shipment and upload the receipt. All the computers on the network execute the code and send the money from the smart contract to the supplier's wallet to increase his balance. Then, all these new balances are updated across all the computers on the network. Let's now move on to some uses of smart contracts. The most popular application of smart contracts is their use in token swaps, where you can make a pool of two tokens and allow other people to swap their tokens. For example, you can write a smart contract that says, if you give the pool one Ethereum, then you will get 1,000 mana tokens. So, when people want to swap their Ethereum to mana, they deposit their Ethereum into the pool, and they get their mana tokens automatically, without any human intervention. You may be wondering, what will the prices be like? Well, the pool adjusts the prices automatically with a mathematical formula, based on the supply and demand of the two tokens in the pool. These pools are called liquidity pools, and we have a full detailed video about them. You can check it out. It explains this topic simply. Another use of smart contracts is in the lending and borrowing space. For example, Alice wants to earn interest on her $4,000 worth of Ethereum. So, she meets Taylor, who wants to borrow her money, and will pay her 3% interest monthly. But the thing is, Alice doesn't know Taylor that much, so she doesn't trust him. What if he refuses to pay her the interest? Or even worse, he grabs her money and run away with it. So. Instead, Alice can use a dApp like Avi, where she deposits her money in a smart contract for lending. Then she will start earning interest right away. When someone wants to borrow Alice's money, he has to provide a collateral to the smart contract first. So, if he defaults and can't repay the loan, the smart contract automatically liquidates his collateral and pay back Alice her money. What if you don't have a collateral, but still want to borrow money to use in arbitrage? Well, you can borrow $100,000, for example, right now, without providing any collateral. This is called flash loans. So, where is the catch here? Well, the catch is that you have to repay the money right away, in the same minute or so. So, for example, you can borrow $10,000 right now, buy 2,500 mana tokens for $10,000 on Coinbase, and sell them for $10,125 on Binance. Then you repay the loan plus the $9 fees and keep the $116 in profit. If, for example, you didn't repay the loan or didn't make a profit, then the smart contract automatically reverses the transaction and the funds will be returned to the lender. We will explain flash loans and how they work in details in an upcoming video. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it. Insurance is in another field where smart contracts are used. The French insurance company AXA has launched a flights delay insurance service called Fizzy, which will use Ethereum smart contracts to automatically process and issue payments. So, when you buy their Fizzy insurance product, a new smart contract will be created on the Ethereum blockchain. This smart contract is connected to a global flights database. So, 
When your flight is delayed for over two hours, the smart contract will automatically release your insurance money and you will get paid without the need to contact the company. This idea can be used not just in flight insurance but also in other areas like products insurance. Finally, we can use smart contracts in the real estate field where we can store the ownership of a house as a token on the blockchain, also called NFT. Whoever has ownership of this NFT on the blockchain has ownership of the house. So, when you try to buy a house this way, you deposit your money in a smart contract, and the seller gets his money only when the NFT ownership goes to you. So, you become the only owner of the house, and no one can claim ownership of this house, as the blockchain will simply deny it. Before we end the video, let's talk about some of the drawbacks of using smart contracts. The most obvious drawback of smart contracts is the bugs that can be written in the code accidentally. These bugs can be used by hackers to steal the money in the smart contract. This happened in 2016, where 50 million US dollars were stolen by a hacker in what is known as the DAO hack. Another issue with the use of smart contracts is that they cannot get real-world data from the blockchain. For example, if you and Bob want to bet on the results of a match, you bet $50 on Team 1 and Bob bets $50 on Team 2, and you both lock the $100 in a smart contract. After the match ends, how does the smart contract know which Team won? This can be solved partially by using what is called oracles, which are services that provide real-world data to smart contracts on the blockchain. This data can be prices, financial markets data, temperatures, and other quantitative data. The problem here is that not all data can be communicated by oracles. Accidental damage to cars, for example, cannot be provided by oracles to insurance companies. Also, what if someone claims ownership to your house and doesn't care about the NFT you own on the blockchain? This reveals the need for regulations by governments before we can fully use smart contracts in the real estate field especially. Another drawback of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain right now is the very high gas fees. But we think this problem could be solved in the future with Ethereum 2.0. So, smart contracts are great for many use cases. They provide automation for many processes and eliminate a lot of intermediaries. But these problems must be solved first to be able to use them to their maximum potential, which we think will happen especially with the very fast development rate of smart contracts right now. At the end of this video, we really hope that you learned what you need to know about the smart contracts and how they work. And if you liked our video, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.